As everybody here knows, my new slogan was going to be Make America Remember This. Remember? It was supposed to be something a little different than Make America Great. It was supposed to be Keep America Great. But America's not great right now, so we're using the same slogan, Make America Great Again. And we may even add to it, but we'll keep it. Make America Great Again Again. Donald Trump in Iowa last night as we learned more this week about the former president's actions ahead of the January 6th insurrection. Chief Washington correspondent John Carl has new reporting on that day in his new book, Betrayal. He joins us live after this report. While the Capitol was invaded by his supporters, Donald Trump remained out of sight at the White House. Establishing what exactly he was doing is a central goal of the January 6th investigation in the House. The committee has demanded a mountain of confidential documents related to what Trump, his top aides, and members of his family were up to during the riot. On Friday, President Biden ordered the National Archives to turn over a batch of those documents. While presidents of both parties have long fought to protect executive privilege, which allows a president to keep deliberations with aides confidential, Biden's White House counsel said in this case, President Biden has determined that an assertion of executive privilege is not in the best interests of the United States. He believes it to be of the utmost importance for both Congress and the American people to have a complete understanding uh, of the events of that day to prevent them from happening again. Trump is vowing to fight in court, asserting the documents must remain confidential and issuing an angry statement against what he called a fake investigation. For my upcoming book, Betrayal, the final act of the Trump show, I spoke to several people who were in contact with Trump during the riot. Trump, the sources say, was watching TV in his private dining room. He liked what he saw. He boasted about the size of the crowd, and he argued with aides who wanted him to call on his supporters to stop the rioting. I learned more details about Kevin McCarthy's call to Trump as the rioters tried to storm the House chamber. According to a source familiar with the call, McCarthy, frustrated at Trump's indifference to what was happening, said, quote, I just got evacuated from the Capitol. There were shots fired right off the House floor. You need to make this stop. The source said Trump pushed back, saying, quote, they are just more upset than you because they believe it more than you, Kevin, referring to the lie that the election had been stolen. After the riot had been underway for some two hours, Trump finally agreed to make a video statement. In that message, he reluctantly agreed to ask his supporters to go home, but he also praised them. We love you. You're very special. In betrayal, I revealed that an aide who was present for the video recording told me Trump had to tape the message several times before they got it right. And in earlier rejected versions, Trump neglected to tell supporters to leave the Capitol. Those video outtakes are precisely the kind of thing that could help the committee establish Trump's state of mind during the riot. Also this week, a Senate report documented alarming new details about the way Trump attempted to use the Justice Department to steal the presidential election. Attorney General Bill Barr refused to go along, infuriating Trump when he said in early December there was no widespread fraud. Well, he hasn't done anything, so he hasn't looked. They haven't looked very hard, which is a disappointment, to be honest with you. After Barr left in mid-December, the report says Trump pressured acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen to do his bidding, but he too refused. Rosen told the Senate committee he said to Trump that the Justice Department, quote, can't and won't just flip a switch and change the election. In response, Trump asked DOJ, quote, just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. In late December, the former president turned to Jeffrey Clark, a lawyer with no experience in election law, but who promised to declare without evidence that there was widespread voter fraud and to pressure contested states to reverse Biden's victory. Clark also brought a new conspiracy theory to the cocktail of falsehoods. As detailed in Betrayal, two sources familiar with Clark's actions told me he believed that wireless thermostats made in China for Google by a company called Nest Labs might have been used to manipulate voting machines in Georgia. The idea was nuts, but it intrigued Trump, who asked the director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, to look into it. At a dramatic three-hour Oval Office meeting on January 3rd, Trump said he wanted to make Clark acting attorney general. Rosen told the committee that Trump said, quote, one thing we know is you, Rosen, aren't going to do anything to overturn the election. Trump was then told that every senior DOJ official would resign if he went through with his plan, as well as White House counsel Pat Cipollone, who said Trump's plan amounted to a murder-suicide pact. Reluctantly, Trump backed down. 
I spoke to three people present for that extraordinary meeting in the Oval Office. I am told that once Trump realized that he would face mass resignations at the Justice Department and simply could not fire Rosen, uh, that he turned over to the dejected and rejected Stuart Clark, and he asked Rosen, what are you going to do to him now? And Rosen said, ah, there are no hard feelings. You are the only one who can fire him. So, George, after Jeffrey Clark tried and failed to engineer a coup at the Justice Department, he kept his job. Uh, John, extraordinary reporting right there, pr showing pretty clearly the president was doing everything he thought he could uh, to overturn the election going into January 6th. And now he's doing everything he can to fight the investigation as well, trying to invoke executive privilege. Uh, Steve Bannon, one of those associates who says he's not going to comply with congressional subpoena. But it's hard to see how executive privilege applies to somebody who wasn't working in the White House. Yeah, this is the first time it's ever been tried. It's basically saying that anybody that the, that the president reached out to and talked to would be covered by executive privilege because he was getting advice. And, George, it's significant that as Bannon refuses uh, to comply with this subpoena, uh, his lawyer is saying explicitly that he is de doing so at the instructions of Donald Trump. Donald Trump, who just earlier this week said that he had no problem or suggested he would have no problem seeing his people testify, is now through his lawyers saying that he doesn't want any of them to talk to the committee. John Carl, thanks very much. The book Betrayal comes out, what, November 16th? November 16th, and much more to come. John Carl, thanks. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.